Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and in this video, we're going to look at CircuitPython and some updates to some of the drivers that we created for MicroPython and see how to use those drivers with CircuitPython. So there are a few small differences uh, that I've talked about before in some of the earlier CircuitPython videos. And by the way, take a look in the description when this goes up on YouTube. I'll have some links to like an intro to CircuitPython if you're not familiar with it. So it's a version of MicroPython that's basically built for the educational boards that Adafruit will sell uh, to help people learn Python. So it'll be a little bit easier to use hardware in Python and so one really cool thing is that we've uh, really had, did a deep dive into MicroPython last year to create a bunch of drivers for things like the feather wings that we have, stuff like uh, the LED matrix and backpack displays, uh, little TFT LCDs, uh, servo drivers. All of that stuff has a nice little module that you can use in MicroPython to control that hardware, just like in Arduino if you've used a library like maybe the NeoPixel library to light up NeoPixels. Uh, same kind of thing with MicroPython. And now with CircuitPython, we've basically gone through and updated some of these libraries, uh, created new versions actually, and then updated some of the guides to show you how to use either the older library with MicroPython or some of the newer libraries that work with CircuitPython. And I'll talk through some of the differences and kind of why there are some differences and what some of the differences uh, mean and kind of why, why it might be interesting to check out CircuitPython for this. So let's just kind of dive in. Uh, for this video, I think I'm just going to run through a couple examples of some updated guides. We'll look at the PCA9685 uh, PWM servo driver. So we'll move a little servo. And then we'll also look at the LED matrix display. Uh, and we'll look at both the ESP8266 and the SAMD21 port, uh, both running CircuitPython. So I'll show you how to load these newer libraries and a few little nice tips and tricks along the way, especially if you use Mac OS X with the SAMD21 port. I'll show you some really nice and useful workarounds here. So let's just kind of dive in. We'll get to the main view right now. And uh, this video, there's not going to be much coding. We're actually just going to follow some guides. So we'll bring up the first guide that we're going to look at. Uh, and the hardware I have right here, so this is an ESP8266 Feather Huzzah. It's underneath, um, the, on top right here, is the PCA9685 servo driver Feather Wing. And so connected to it is a little servo motor and then just a little 4 AA battery pack that powers the servo driver. Because usually you want to use external power when you're driving servos. You know, even these tiny little servos, um, they have little motors that can pull a decent amount of current. So make sure to use external power. Uh, but that's what we're going to start with first, is using the ESP8266 uh, that's going to run CircuitPython and how to use it with this PCA9685 PWM servo driver. Now again, I'll put links to all of the guides and uh, web pages and things that I'm looking at in the description when this goes up on YouTube, so you can go and check these out. But this is a guide that's actually been published uh, for a few months already. So this was something that we wrote for MicroPython, and it talks about a MicroPython-specific library uh, that's still around. You can still use it. It still works great. Uh, but now I've gone through and updated, and you'll see at the top, uh, at the top of this rather, it says, note, this guide has been updated to show how to use the PCA9685 with both MicroPython.org and Adafruit CircuitPython firmware. So look in all of the MicroPython guides. I've put a note at the top if it's been updated or not, and almost all of them are. Uh, the ones that still need to be updated are some of the basics like digital I.O. and analog I.O., uh, mostly because we've got some more ideas about how to simplify that stuff, so we want to do like a simpler abstraction on top of those. So maybe once we get a little further along with those, we'll start updating that. Uh, but for now, things any of the Featherwing guides uh, are pretty much updated and have new libraries now, so you can go through and check them out, uh, except for the CharlieFlex one. I'm still working on that, so uh, look for that probably early next week. But anyways, we'll dive into this PCA9685 guide. Now, not much really changed to use this with CircuitPython. So there's a new library, and there's a small difference in how you initialize the I2C interface and use that new library. Uh, but once you're actually using the library, it's exactly the same. So I kept the interface the same as the old library. So if you have old code, it should just work with a few tweaks to the I2C initialization. Uh, for it, and we'll kind of walk through and see how that works. In the future, we might actually kind of refactor some of these drivers and make uh, maybe cleaner interfaces and things. Uh, but again, it's all just kind of an evolving process here uh, for a lot of the drivers and things we're making. Okay, so for this guide, the hardware section actually doesn't change at all. So how you hook up the PCA9685 to your board is exactly the same between CircuitPython and MicroPython. Again, it's only a software difference. Uh, that we're dealing with here. So nothing changes here. Hook it up the same. Everything applies um, exactly the same. 
So software is where it gets a little bit interesting. So now, and again, it's, it says at the top of the page, like, you know, pay attention. There are some differences that are called out here. So in particular, how you install the module, there's a section at the top that talks about how to do it with MicroPython firmware. And again, make sure that you're really clear with the distinction. So MicroPython firmware is from micropython.org. So if you've gone to micropython.org and you've downloaded the firmware from here, then you're using MicroPython. Um, we might refer to it as upstream sometimes or micropython.org. Uh, and so that's kind of the master version of MicroPython. And then CircuitPython is Adafruit's version that we've tweaked to make it a little bit simpler and more focused on beginners. And so that's the important difference here. Uh, for CircuitPython, you actually get it from our GitHub repository. So if you go to Adafruit slash CircuitPython, um, you'll get it here. And we have uh, a blog post that mentions how to do this. Again, it's in beta, so it's still evolving. Uh, and we'll have some nicer guides and things as we get some boards out that use this uh, natively. But again, be super clear and just make sure you know which version you're using. If you're not sure, open the REPL and it should actually print out the version uh, at the top. So like, actually, I'll show you. I have this board connected and if I connect to it right now, uh, we'll open screen, dev TTY, uh, Scilabs, 11.5200 baud. And if actually, if I press control D, a D is in dog, that will reset the board. And then you can see Adafruit CircuitPython 0.8.3. So I know for sure this board is running uh, CircuitPython. So an, a quick little way to check, uh, because if you try to use one module, if you try to use the MicroPython module with CircuitPython, it might work on the ESP8266. It'll, it'll actually work because we still have the older machine API. Uh, there's room on that board to do that. But on the boards like the SAMD21 that are more limited on space, we only have this newer uh, uh, machine, or not machine API. Uh, basically, there's a native I.O. and a Bitbang I.O. module I'll talk a little more about. Uh, so there's a different interface, and those older modules won't work on there. So for this guide, you know, I've already actually done videos and everything. Nothing changes with the MicroPython module install. You download these .mpy files. You copy them to your board. With the ESP8266, you probably want to use a tool like Ampy to copy those files to the board. Uh, and then for CircuitPython, it's a little bit different. So there's a new library, and it actually links to it right here, and it's uh, up on GitHub. And so this library, again, has the same interface. It's just slightly different in how you initialize it. And the other big difference is it's a module. So instead of being a bunch of raw .py files that get compiled into .mpy files, which are just pre-compiled, a little more efficient bytecode versions, uh, there is a directory with this init.py and then a bunch of files inside of it. So this is just a nice way in Python to make one thing, like something you can import with an import command that has a bunch of subfiles inside of it. So instead of jamming all of this code into like a single PCA9685.py file, which would get really big and annoying to use, um, we separate it out into a bunch of files. And the cool thing is you can actually just import only the files you care about. So you, it can save a little bit of memory. You don't have to actually import everything for this. Uh, so that's one big difference when you look at these drivers. Uh, and the guide actually calls out, so what you need to do is you go to the releases page. So the releases tab under GitHub, and this is where you'll find all the releases. This is just like the old MicroPython drivers. Uh, on those drivers, we have these .mpy files as downloads. For these drivers, since they're modules, which means they have to be in a directory, uh, we package them up as zip files. So you download this zip file, you open the zip file up, and you'll see there's actually a directory inside of it. Uh, and actually, I'll show you real quick. Um, if I go to this folder here, uh, you can see, so right here is uh, this PCA9685 folder, and then inside of it is uh, the .mpy files that represent this library. So you need to download this zip file and open it up, and you want to keep the directory. So it'll have this PCA96, Adafruit underscore PCA9685 uh, directory, because that's really important. That directory has to be copied to the board with all of the files inside of it. Uh, along, t uh, along the way to the board. So, okay, so for the ESP8266, and I mentioned in here, you know, if your board does not support USB mass storage, if it doesn't show up as a USB thumb drive, uh, like some of the boards do, then you probably need to use a tool like Ampy that can copy a file to your MicroPython board. I mean, you could use the web REPL on the ESP8266, uh, but Ampy works pretty well for me. And the cool thing is I added a recent command to Ampy. So uh, I mentioned here, uh, so right here I talk about you want to use Ampy, and if, I, if you go to uh, the Ampy page, it, this links to a guide where I talk all about how to install Ampy. Uh, you want to make sure that you update Ampy to the latest version. I think it's under the install Ampy. Yeah, this upgrade Ampy section. So if you haven't upgraded Ampy in a while, 
run a command like this, and it talks a little bit more about it. And really the important thing is you use a pip install, but you add this dash dash upgrade option, and that will install the latest version. Because in the latest version of Ampy, I added a nice directory copy command. So it will copy a directory and all of the subfiles onto your board. So you don't have to go file by file and like make the directory and stuff. That's a big pain. Uh, so that's you definitely want to have the latest version of Ampy for this. And I've already set up Ampy ahead of time. Oh, and by the way, um, this board is running the latest one uh, 0.8.3 version of, uh, my, of CircuitPython. So you know, load your latest firmware before you get started. Uh, and I'll actually show you if I ampy ls, this is everything that's on the board. I've actually already got the files on the board, but I'll, I'll go through and show you how to add these files. Um, first, I'll show you there's a new command in ampy, this rmdir. This will remove a directory and all of the files inside of it. So if I call uh, rmdir on like Adafruit uh, bus device, for example, and we'll talk more in a moment what this is, that's just gonna remove it all. So if I list all the directories, now you see that thing's gone and there were some files inside of there. It deleted all those files, everything's gone. Uh, so a good way to kind of zero out your board and get back to a known good state. So, you know, I'll clear everything out from this board. Uh, we'll remove register and then we'll remove the uh, PCA9685, oops, Adafruit underscore PCA9685 directory from here. Uh, okay, so now if I ampy ls, I just have the boot.py. There's no other folders and things on here. So let's copy over that PCA9685 uh, directory. And again, with the latest version of ampy, just use the put command uh, and point it at a directory on your local machine. So like right here in the current directory that I'm in, I have um, all of the folders that I need to copy. So here's this Adafruit PCA9685 folder. So I just want to run ampy put Adafruit uh, PCA9685. And this will go through and it'll copy the directory. It'll create that directory on the root of the board, which is important. This actually has to be copied onto the root of the board. And maybe in the future, there's a slash lib directory that uh, we might actually be putting these uh, libraries into. But the root of the board works because it has to be in a special spot for MicroPython and CircuitPython to find it, to see that there's a module there. Like it only looks in certain paths on the file system. So the root is kind of the safest place to put it. Okay, that copied it over. Now, the other thing that the guide calls out in addition to that driver uh, for the PCA9685, there are two other drivers that you need. And this links to their GitHub release page um, again. So like this bus device module, uh, again, download this, open the zip file, you'll find a directory, and then copy that entire directory and all of the files inside of it directly to your MicroPython board. So you want to do that. And you also want to copy this uh, Adafruit register module. And I've talked a little bit in the previous video about uh, what these modules are. So they're helpers for our drivers. They simplify how our drivers are implemented. So uh, it lets us abstract away the registers and like write driver code that deals with registers instead of low level I squared C reads and writes and things like that. Because with this PCA9685, it has 16 registers that control the PWM uh, duty cycle for each of its 16 channels. So as a driver writer, it makes a little more sense to say, I want to control you know, PWM register zero and set it to this duty cycle. I don't want to say, uh, you know, make I squared C write against address OX, FE, whatever, you know, looking at the data sheet and having to decode this thing. So again, these are nice little things. As a user of this module, you don't have to care about this, uh, but you do have to copy these to the board because you will get an error uh, if you try to use the PCA9685 module and you don't have these files copied to the board, you'll get like an import error. It's going to tell you, I can't find the Adafruit register uh, module. And so if you get some confusing error like that, it means you've probably missed one of these dependencies. Um, and unfortunately, uh, you know, maybe in the future, there might be some tools, maybe Ampy or something uh, could maybe pick up some of these dependencies and install these libraries. Uh, but again, it's early days for stuff. So for now, I'm kind of showing you the manual way to do this. Okay, I'm just gonna put uh, both of those on the board again. So let's put bus device and then uh, the register module. It doesn't matter which order you put them on the board, uh, but they both have to be there. And then Ampy put Adafruit register. And that's takes it a second here. It's basically just copying the files over. So in a moment, it should finish up. And then once that's done, I'll show you, uh, we're pretty close then to using this. Um, okay, so now the usage, um, again, there's a small difference in the initialization. So in MicroPython, I talk about right here in this section, you use the machine module and inside of there is an I squared C class and that needs to take these pin instances 
Uh, and so for like the ESP8266 with the feather wing, you wanna use these uh, numbers. So basically you send, I think it's your clock line first and then your data line first. Uh, so this is kind of the default that you wanna use, but you could use any pins for this. Uh, for CircuitPython, it's a little bit different because we have uh, two different I.O. modules. So there's BitBang I.O. and then there's also Native I.O. And so the difference between those is that Native I.O. uses the peripherals built into your microcontroller. So your microcontroller probably has an I2C interface or a SPI interface or an analog to digital converter. All of that stuff is exposed under the Native I.O. module because it's native to the chip. And then BitBang I.O. is uh, something that has software implementations of some protocols like SPI and I2C. So that's useful if your chip doesn't support I2C natively, like the ESP8266 actually. It doesn't have a hardware uh, I2C interface. But with software, uh, you can basically implement the I2C protocol. It's, it's not as fast as real I2C, but it turns out most devices don't care about the speed uh, in this case. So that's one important difference. So we made it a little more explicit in CircuitPython. Uh, we're thinking about potentially in the future though, finding a simpler way to do this. Uh, it might be nice if in like a module, it gives you a default I2C interface. So on the ESP8266, maybe you get a BitBang version by default and you don't have to care or know about the differences. But that's why there's a difference here. And so you do kind of need to know on the ESP8266, if you're using I2C, it doesn't support native IO, so you have to use BitBang IO. Uh, and that's this top little module import that you want to run. Now the first line here is this from board import star. So actually let's connect to the REPL on our board and I'll show you a little bit more about this module, um, the board module. And this is built into the CircuitPython firmware. So I'm at the serial REPL on the board. Uh, and let's import board and then I'm going to run the dir command. And so what dir does is just list everything that's inside the board module. And so you can see the board module actually has these high level pins defined. So these are kind of the uh, machine.pin instances that we created in, in MicroPython explicitly, but we've just created some global ones because we know for the ESP8266, there's only a certain number of GPIO pins. They have specific names. So we've given them that uh, these, these higher level names. So it's a little bit easier to address these pins. You don't have to know GPIO5 is the SCL clock line for I squared C because we've actually added an SCL line that happens to be GPIO5 uh, for this chip, or maybe it's four, I forget exactly which one it is. Uh, so that makes it a little bit simpler. You don't need to care or know about those differences. Uh, and then the way that you might want to use this, so you can import board like I just did, and then you have to use like board.scl to reference those pins. Um, or in Python, you can say from a module import star, which just pulls everything into the global namespace. And now I can just reference SCL just by SCL. So it's just, you know, if I wanted to use like GPIO 12, I could say, okay, GPIO 12, there's a pin instance ready to go for that thing. Uh, so that's one important difference that we have here is that now you use the board module to import those pins. And then again, so like I said, let's import the BitBang IO module. Um, and if I actually, if I try uh, to, well, I'm not going to show it, but I could import native IO because there is a native uh, SPI interface on the ESP8266, but you'll see it would fail if I tried to create an I2C instance because we know in our CircuitPython firmware for ESP8266, there's no native implementation of I2C. So if you get an error and you know, you're running code that's trying to use native IO and it says, I don't have native I2C, you probably want to switch to BitBang IO in that case. And that's why in my code, I do this kind of interesting import statement where I import BitBang IO as IO. And so that tells Python to rename this module when I import it. So let's run this command. So we'll say, uh, oops, import bitbang IO as IO. And so this way, I actually can't reference bitbang IO. It's, it's not pulled in yet. There's nothing defined, but I can reference IO. And so that's the bitbang IO module. And then you see, I do the same thing for native IO. And the cool thing is because I import both these modules with the same name and they both for the most part have the same interface, uh, your code doesn't care then. So if you write your code to use this IO module, like I show in the next line right here, like creating this I2C interface, then to change between BitBang and uh, native I2C, you just change your import statement. So you know you import BitBang IO as IO, or you import native IO as IO, uh, and you're all good to go with that. So okay, so that's how we import the module. And then uh, this is how we create the I2C interface. So in the BitBang IO or in the native IO module, there's an I2C class. So we just say I2C equals 
uh, I O dot I squared C, and then it needs to take in the clock line and the data line. So in this case, I'll pass in the SEL and the SDA pins, which are what are defined in the board module, like we saw above right here. So I do that. Okay, so now I've got the I squared C interface. And again, this is really similar to MicroPython. You can see in the MicroPython world, we just had a different module, the machine module, and we referenced pins in a slightly different way. Um, so, you know, we're, we're very, very similar. Uh, and then the next thing is now we want to import this and start using it. And this is where the last difference is between um, the MicroPython drivers and the CircuitPython drivers. And this isn't really a difference specific to CircuitPython. It's just that as we wrote these new drivers, we made them modules, which means you import them in a different way. So with the MicroPython drivers, they're a little bit older, and we just reference these raw.py or .mpy files. So you would import this PCA9685.mpy file using a command like this. Whereas now, because we copied a module over to the board, that's a folder with the init.py and all the files inside of it, uh, we need to do that import in a slightly different way. So we're basically saying, from that Adafruit underscore PCA9685 module, import a sub-module or, or a file inside of it called PCA9685. Uh, so a little bit different syntax. Again, it's actually not specific to CircuitPython. We could do this with the MicroPython drivers too. And maybe in the future, if we ever go back and uh, do a big pass on updating uh, those old drivers, maybe we'll uh, swap them over to use these modules too. Because the nice thing is, then it's a little bit cleaner. You don't have all these .mpy files on the root of your board's file system, which can get a little cluttered and annoying, and like the names might even conflict. So everything lives in a subfolder, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, okay, so to use the servos, I'm actually gonna scroll down uh, because it's later in the guide that I show how to control the servos. You can dim LEDs using the PCA9685. It's just a PWM, pulse width modulation uh, servo driver. Um, okay, so here's where I show how to import the servo module that's inside of this library. And again, I call out, there's a difference here. So on, on the MicroPython module, you import the servo.mpy file just directly like this. Whereas with the CircuitPython module, you want to run this command right here to import the servo submodule from the Adafruit PCA9685 module. So let's do that. We'll say from Adafruit underscore PCA9685 import servo. And that imports the servo module. So now I've got a module and it looks like that. Uh, and then now the cool thing is we're done with all the differences between CircuitPython and MicroPython. So the library itself is exactly the same. The rest of this guide, uh, none of the code changes in how you use the servos. So as you saw, it's just a small difference in the I squared C initialization because we have this board module and the difference between the native IO and the bit banged IO modules. But the drivers, we've kept them the same for now so that it's got the exact same interface. Uh, so if I want to control this servo, I need to create an instance of this uh, servos class and I pass it the I squared C interface that I created before. So we'll say servos equals servo dot servos class and I pass it that I squared C bus. And then I can just call servos.position. And this servo I have connected to channel zero. Uh, oops, let me move this more into view. So if I do channel zero, and then with the position function, you need to you can pass in like the degrees of rotation you want to move to, uh, or the, like the microsecond pulse width that you want to set. For servos, uh, a pulse width, so that's what the US uh, or, or uh, uh, this is basically microseconds is what this means. Uh, that's I'm basically saying. A microseconds, uh, 1500 microseconds is the middle position for a servo. So if I run this, then you see it just snapped into the middle position. Uh, and then for servos, and I talk about this in the guide, uh, the 2000 microsecond position moves you know, to one extreme on this side. And then if I go to the 1000 position, it moves all the way over to the opposite side. So I go back to 2000, 1000, and you see it moves around. Uh, so that's it. That's, you know, using this library is exactly the same at this point between uh, the two versions of uh, MicroPython and CircuitPython. So again, just the important difference is um, you want to download the correct library for your, uh, your firmware, either the MicroPython or the CircuitPython library, uh, copy it to the board, probably using the latest version of Ampy, um, and then slightly change how you initialize I squared C, and then change how you import the module so that you import it using uh, the kind of directory-based module versus the .mpy files before. Okay, cool, so that was the PCA9685. Uh, let me show another demo now, and we're gonna look at uh, the LED matrix right here. So this is a little feather wing. This is just a 16 by eight uh, LED matrix, cool little display. But let's use this board. So this is 
the Feather M0 Ada Longer, uh, although it's, it doesn't really matter, it's just the M0, which is the SAMD21 uh, processor. So what I'm gonna do is I'll unplug the ESP8266 and we'll move that out of the way and we'll plug in this board right here. Oops, let me copy this over. And I've loaded this board up with uh, the latest version of CircuitPython 0.8.3. And I'll show you something cool though. So uh, this this board is really neat because with the SAMD21, it has a file system that you can access as a USB drive like this. So there's a MicroPython drive. Uh, in the future, uh, this is actually gonna change to CircuitPy as the name of it. So just be aware, this might change. Uh, but this, 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 you can see this actually has some folders on here and some files and stuff inside of here. Um, so this is cool because as you saw with these newer modules, we have to copy all these files over. So it's a little bit easier when you've got a file system like this to do it. But there's a gotcha that I'll show you. So let's just try a naive kind of copy files over approach. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna reinstall CircuitPython just so I start from scratch on this board. So uh, I'm gonna run the BASA C compiler tool uh, and with the erase, write, verify, reset. And then, uh, well actually first, let me list the uh, USB port because I forget what name it gives it. So dev tty dot USB modem. Okay, well that's the name of it. So that's the name of the USB port for this chip. And then uh, first I need to double click reset and we should see in a moment. So you see the little red bootloader light is flashing. Uh, so this means the chip's ready to be programmed with uh, CircuitPython or MicroPython, any firmware. And then I'll run the BASA C. Uh, this, this is the tool that loads MicroPython or CircuitPython onto the SAMD21 processor. And again, I wanna give the erase, the write, the verify, the reset, the port command and I want to point it at the TTY USB modem 143421 uh, device. And then I need to point it at the firmware that I want to write, which I have in this directory. It's the Adafruit CircuitPython Feather M0 Basic .bin file. And so we do that, and it just uh, erased the chip, and it just reset it and loaded it up with uh, CircuitPython. And if I connect to the serial REPL, uh, then I should see that, you know, yep, here it is. You know, it's auto reset it's telling me if I press enter. Got Adafruit Circuit Python running on here, so that's cool. Now you'll notice uh, again this shows up as this uh, MicroPython drive, and there's nothing inside of it. So uh, for this library, again, you know I mentioned at the top, I say this has been updated and it works with both of these. So again, if you're looking at a library or a guide rather, uh, check at the top. I, I should call out and say if this works with one or the other version. Uh, and then again, the hardware is exactly the same here, uh, and I, I won't plug in the hardware just yet. Uh, but no changes here, it's just the software that changes. And just like we saw with the previous driver, uh, the big difference is which library that you want to install. So now there's this Adafruit CircuitPython HT16K33 library, which looks a lot like the PCA9685. It's got its own sub or module um, inside of it with a bunch of sub modules that we import here. So, and again, the release tab has a zip file that you download and you want to copy it over to your board. Um, now, I'll show you something tricky though. So if I go back and I'm looking at this MicroPython folder, uh, so you might be thinking, okay, well, let's just go to the files that I wanna copy over. And uh, I remember, and again, I call it in the guide, you need the bus device, you need the register module, and then in this case, the HT16K33 module. So I need all three of these folders on my MicroPython board. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'll just drag and drop these onto the MicroPython board right here. So let's see what happens. Oh, it actually worked. Okay, so this this is interesting, uh, but I'll, I'll show you in a moment some some things that might go wrong with this. Um, okay, wow. So this 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 is interesting. Um, so it might work uh, if you're lucky, but you might run into a problem, an out of space error. And so there's a weird thing that happens, and I'll, I'll show you something interesting. So you might not know in OS 10, um, and again, what I'm talking about here only applies to Mac OS 10 on Windows. We, I haven't seen any of these issues. Uh, basically, there's a problem where these hidden files are created and they take up a lot of space on the file system and you can't even see them. Everything looks fine uh, unless you use the terminal. Then you can see, oh, there's these giant files. But it's only OS X that seems to do this. Windows seems to be okay and doesn't do that. Uh, and Linux, I'm pretty sure, won't do this either. Or if it does, there's probably a way to turn it off. Whereas, unfortunately, Mac OS X, I, don't, I couldn't find a way to turn this behavior off. Anyways, um, on Mac OS X, there's this slash volumes directory. And if you look at this, this is actually all of the drives on your Mac. 
And you can see here's that MicroPython drive that I have, and here's my main hard drive. And if I list everything in the MicroPython drive, uh, I can see these are the, the folders that are inside of there. I can actually change into that directory if I want, um, you know, MicroPython. And this is cool. Like, you know, in my terminal, I'm now basically connected to my board. I can interact with files. I can copy things. You know, I can list everything. Uh, so if I go into like Adafruit bus device and then run the lsla command, this just shows me all the files that are on the board. Um, so this is interesting. So this is good in that when I did this drag and drop, um, nothing bad happened in that I didn't run out of space. But if you're just starting out and if you just flash the firmware and if you haven't done some of these steps that I'm going to show you in a moment, you might get an out of space error and wonder like, what's wrong? Like all of these files are really small. There's 64K on the file system. Uh, how could I be running out of space? And the problem is sometimes when you download a file from the internet and it might even depend on which web browser you're using, like if you're using Safari versus Chrome, uh, Mac OS X might mark that file as downloaded from the internet which means it applies a bunch of extra security stuff uh, so that it, it, it tries to be smarter than you and say, hey, you know, you, are you sure you want to run this executable that you've downloaded from the internet? Uh, which is smart because some people don't realize that you shouldn't run everything you download from the internet. Uh, the problem is, where do they store that bit that says this thing was downloaded from the internet? Well, it turns out Mac OS X has this concept of extended attributes for a file. And it's just some metadata that they put into their internal file system that goes along with the file. It's not a part of the file. It's not stored in the file itself. It's just along with the file in the Mac OS X file system. Now, the problem is when you copy a file, uh, like with drag and drop or just a simple CP copy command, uh, OS X will realize, okay, you're copying to a file system that does not support this uh, extended attribute, so I'm going to fake it. I'm going to make a hidden file that you won't even see. It has a dot in front of it, and it's going to store all of this extended attribute stuff. And it turns out that file is really big. It's four kilobytes per file. Uh, so each of these files is a nit.py, i squared c, device.mpy. Every single one of these files has a four kilobyte hidden file sometimes if it's copied over. And that adds up really fast. So, you know, just these three files alone, that's like 12K of, of data. And you've only got 64K on the file system. So that will go very, I mean, basically you run out of problems if you try to copy like three modules onto the board because you probably have four or five files inside each of those mod modules and boom, there goes all your 64K. Uh, luckily, there is a workaround for this. So I mentioned in the guide, uh, I, I basically say, so if your board supports USB mass storage, uh, then try drag and drop and it might work like you just saw for me. Uh, but if you're using a board that does not have an external spy flash, like this Feather M0 or uh, the Gemma M0 and Trinket M0 when those come out, uh, this is in contrast to some of the boards we're gonna have like the Metro M0 and the Circuit Playground um, M0 or Express. That board has a little extra spy flash chip that uh, actually Lady Ada was talking about uh, just today on the Hack Chat with CircuitPython. So that's a two megabit or, you know, who knows, we might actually increase or decrease or tweak the size of it, but it's a bunch more storage for the file system. So instead of 64K, you have a couple megabits of data and that's probably okay. You know, even though you get these 4K junk files that don't matter, probably won't matter if you're just copying a few modules over. Uh, but this could apply also in that case if you run out of space on there. Anyways though, so uh, I link to this workaround that I put into the SAMD21 guide. So this is the Mac OS X file copy issue. Again, this is only for Mac OS X. And basically you just need to do this once for your board. Um, and so I call out, so you find out the, the volume name and then you run this bunch of cryptic commands right here and you just kind of have to trust what they do. It's actually from a Stack Overflow question. So props to the person uh, I linked to it that, that answered this. But basically what you do, so I'm gonna run through these commands myself here. So you go into the terminal uh, and again, you have to find out the volume name. So, you know, list all your volumes and find the MicroPython one or it might be called CircuitPy in the future. Uh, and then you wanna run this, uh, this command right here, this mdutil off and you point it at the path to that volume, so slash volume slash MicroPython. And this turns off uh, spotlight indexing, apparently, because there's these hidden files that Mac OS X will index helpfully, I guess. You know, even if it's a little USB stick, I don't know why it would index that, because it might not be connected all the time. Who knows? Uh, anyways, though, so do run that magic. Uh, and then the next thing is we're actually going to change into the directory for that volume. So now we're on our MicroPython board. 
And we're going to run this little rmrf command. Uh, th this will delete a bunch of hidden files that Mac OS X helpfully created for you. Things like this trash folder, these spotlight things. Blows them all away. We don't care. We don't want them. Uh, and then we're going to make this directory called .fseventssd. And this will basically fool Mac OS X. It's going to create this directory. And then we're going to create some files inside of it that are just empty. And the nice thing is, if apparently if Mac OS X sees that those files already exist, even if they're empty, it won't fill them with the junk. So this kind of fools Mac OS X into thinking like, oh, this stupid trash file is already there. I'm not going to uh, create it myself and fill it with four kilobytes of junk that's going to fill the file system. Uh, so you run these commands, uh, and then uh, this last command just takes you back to the directory that you were in. Um, okay, so that's like a one-time thing you want to do for your SAMD21 board. And in theory, on your Mac, uh, it should not create those files anymore. Uh, and I think even if you take it to another Mac, it might not. But just to be safe, you probably want to run these commands again on every Mac that you use your board with. Now, the next thing is, unfortunately, I've seen in some cases you still can't do drag and drop copy because it creates those hidden extended attribute files. Now, in my case, you saw it didn't do that, and I think that's because I downloaded my files with Chrome, and I think Chrome just happened to not mark the files as downloaded from the internet. Maybe there's a magic command to wipe that bit out, uh, and that might simplify things in the future. But anyways, the, there is a way to work around this. So you have to use the terminal cp command, the copy command. Um, and actually, I'm going to go back up to um, the, uh, oops, I want to go to my downloads directory and the, the CircuitPython files that I have ahead of time. So, you know, I've got my uh, libraries that I want to install right here. And so here's the thing. You need to use this dash uppercase X option. And I mention it right here, cp dash X. That tells the copy command to not copy any of these extended attributes. And so that won't create these 4K hidden files that will fill your file system. Uh, and you can recursively copy a folder. So you can do cp-r-uppercase-x, and then the folder to copy, and then the volume name that you want to copy it to. So let's do that. So let's do cp-rx, uh, uppercase x, and then let's do Adafruit uh, bus device, oops, lowercase. And then one important thing too, don't add a trailing slash because the recursive copy will go into that subfolder and copy all the files inside of it to the root of the board, which is not what you want. You want it to copy the, the folder itself and all the files inside of it. So don't add the trailing slash after this. Uh, it's just a little quirk of how the copy command works. And then I need to tell it to copy it to that MicroPython volume um, like this. And so now if I list everything on the MicroPython volume, um, you can see now it's copied over that bus device folder, um, which I had already drag and drop copied it before. But uh, the nice thing, you know, the copy command is just going to copy over it again. Uh, and so again, I'll just show you know, let's copy over the uh, Adafruit register, oops, underscore register, to the MicroPython volume. And again, I have that Rx option, and then Rx copy the uh, HT16K33 to my MicroPython module. Uh, oops. Uh, uh, uh oh, let's see. What did I miss right here? Oh, I misspelled it, it looks like. Uh, I think. Oh, yeah, I did, yes. I'm missing a micro. Wait, did I misspell it? Let's see if I got something wrong here. MicroPython. Uh, oh, I must not have it in this directory. Uh, or did I misspell it? Adafruit. All right, let's, let's uh, use tab completion to make sure I get the right folder name. Adafruit underscore HT16K. I don't want the trailing slash. Uh, to volumes, micro Python. OK, there we go. I must have misspelling. It's not immediately obvious to me. Uh, but everyone's probably yelling at me. You know, Obviously, oh, uh, add fruit versus Adafruit. So OK, that was uh, the, the problem. Anyways, so I've copied them over to the board. Um, now let's connect to the uh, REPL on this board. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to uh, connect my little module like that. So now you can see the little LED matrix is connected. And let's connect to the, the serial REPL. So 11.200 baud. And OK, so I'm going to just do a soft reset, Control-D. 
uh, and then I'm going to press something so that I stop the auto reset mode. Auto resets the cool thing where if you save a file, it will automatically reboot. And like if you're at editing the main.py, you'll just instantly see your changes. Uh, Lady Ada was showing that off on the hack chat today. So it's a really cool feature that we'll look more at in the future. Uh, anyways, I'm just going to show how to use the REPL um, kind of interactively here. Okay, so let's go back to our guide. And again, it's exactly like we saw before. Uh, okay, so there's a difference in how we install the module and that little sub issue that we just went through with Mac OS X. Um, and then the next thing is the usage. So again, I squared C initialization. Uh, there's the difference between the machine module with MicroPython and the Bitbang IO versus native IO modules. Now for the SAMD21, the, it has hardware I squared C. So we're going to use the native IO module import. Um, so things will be a little bit different. So let's do from board import star. So that gives us, um, you know, all of, like if I run the dir command, you can see now all the pins are in the global namespace. And you can see there's an SCL pin, an SDA pin. You can see on this board, they're labeled with things like D0, D1, D10. And so you have nice little pin instances here that use the same uh, labels as on the board. So it makes it a little bit easier for uh, people to figure this out. You don't have to trace out GPIO numbers and look at data sheets and things. Anyways, um, okay, the next thing is, let's say import native IO as IO. That imports the native um, IO interface. And then I need to create an instance of the I squared C interface. So I'll say IO dot I squared C. And I need to pass it the clock and the data pins that we want to use. So I do that. And now I've got an I squared C interface. And I'm pretty much ready to use this module. So I call out. And again, there is a small difference in because the library is different. It, it's it uses a module instead of raw.py files. So on MicroPython, I call out, you know, you have to import this HT16K3, uh, 16K33 underscore matrix module. Whereas with the uh, the newer library for CircuitPython, you import the Adafruit HT16K33 module and then the matrix submodule inside of it. And so you just want to run this command basically. Uh, and so this is going to grab that module and import it. And then uh, it's pretty much almost exactly the same as um, using it between the uh, other two, between MicroPython and CircuitPython. So now I just create an instance of the matrix 16 by 8 class, and I pass it the I squared C interface. So let's do that. So matrix equals, and I have to reference this module in a slightly different way uh, because I've imported I have to reference it based on how I imported it like this. And then the matrix 16 by 8 class, and then I pass it the I squared C bus that I created a second ago. And we do that, and then you see like it gets all jumbled and weird. That's OK. I mentioned in the guide when this library initializes, because the, the, the library, it's exactly the same uh, interface as the MicroPython version. So when it initializes, it just turns on the display, and whatever random values were in memory is what you get. Um, but now the usage is exactly the same between CircuitPython and MicroPython. So if I want to turn all the pixels off, I just call matrix.fill with the zero. That just means set each pixel to the value zero, which means off. And then matrix.show, and that updates the display. Or if I want to turn them all on, matrix.fill1, and then show, and boom, everything's turned on. Uh, if I want to turn them off again, I'll do that. And then if I want to set a pixel, I just set the position of the pixel and the color I want. And then maybe let's set uh, the opposite pixel at position 15, 7. And then if I call matrix.show, there you go. You've got the opposite corners and the pixels turned on there. So that's it. Uh, that's all I wanted to show in this stream is that uh, we've gone through and updated all of the MicroPython guides so that they call out if there's a new library that works with CircuitPython instead of MicroPython. Uh, the, the guides should tell you how to install it and use it. And we've tried to keep the differences really minimal right now. So it's just the initialization and how you install the library that primarily changes. Uh, but then once you've got that uh, done, you know how you use the library is exactly the same for now. Uh, but we might go through later and, and maybe make updated versions um, that explore how to simplify some of these drivers even more. Uh, so for now, though, uh, you know, check it out and, and uh, have fun with CircuitPython, basically, so you can start playing with some of these feather wings and things. Um, and I, uh, I'm still kind of going through and testing some of the modules. So if you find issues, um, raise them on GitHub, and uh, we'll come through and, and double check and, and see how things are going for them. So uh, OK, so if there are folks have questions, uh, maybe throw them into the chat. Um, Will all feathers and newer products migrate to CircuitPython? Um, yeah, so definitely going forward, uh, pretty much if there's hardware that Adafruit has that can work with MicroPython, uh, we're going to make it work with CircuitPython for sure. Uh, we'll have to look and see for MicroPython. Uh, it might just depend you know, how easy it is to, to make it work. We do have some ideas about how our CircuitPython drivers 
can be compatible with MicroPython machine API. Because we built our drivers using this bus device and register interface, if someone makes a little shim uh, that just cr that gives that bus device and register interface, pretty much all of our drivers should just work uh, between MicroPython and CircuitPython. So that's probably the direction that we're going to go in the future to support MicroPython is add a little compatibility layer uh, that can make our drivers work on either of these. And so that'll change how you use these modules in the future. Uh, but that's probably the kind of easiest or the best bang for the buck uh, because it's hard. We don't want to support two different versions of the library, which is kind of what we have right now for this. So going forward, it'd be nice to get them all in one code base. And we can even support things like Raspberry Pi. So we're thinking about with that same bus device and register interface, uh, there's no reason why the Raspberry Pi can't have a similar implementation. And then that's really cool that our driver code can work across you know, a Linux operating system versus these little MicroPython boards. So that's the dream. It's going to take us a little while to get there, um, but we'll have to see how it goes with that. So cool. I think that was it uh, as far as questions go. So we'll go back to the main view uh, real quick, or I guess the, the headshot view here, which uh, sometimes has some uh, issues. It looks like, oh boy, it's dropping down to like 20 frames per second. For some reason, my uh, CPU usage is really high. So sorry if this stutters, uh, but I'll get over quickly. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out youtube.com slash Adafruit. You can watch this video, all kinds of other cool videos and projects. Um, check out twitch.tv slash Adafruit. That's where I stream these things live. I like to do a live stream every Friday. So look for all kinds of fun CircuitPython stuff. Like I said, we've updated a bunch of guides and drivers. Uh, so it's probably time to start doing some new stuff, maybe some new drivers or things like that. Uh, I don't know, you have to tune in next week to see what we're up to with CircuitPython. And again, check out also the YouTube channel. Uh, you'll see uh, things like today we had a hack chat on hackaday.io where we talked about CircuitPython. And so you can see a replay of that. Uh, and Lady Ada was doing some cool demos that was showing off some really nice features of CircuitPython, especially for the beginner mindset of, hey, you know, how do you get started writing code and making things work without all of this overhead of like installing software and, uh, you know, all kinds of painful things. So that's what we want to do with CircuitPython is make it really simple, plug in the board, start editing the code and get fun stuff uh, like the, this hardware working. So until next time, thanks a lot. This is Tony uh, and hit the like, the comment, the subscribe, let us know that this is good content and we'll keep doing it. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you later.